Hey guys, before we begin, just a quick announcement. The first bit of X2 Patreon rewards are starting to roll out, and today sees the first release of the X2 Patreon newsletter. Now, I am super excited about this. Every month, the X2 newsletter will be giving you guys a behind the scenes look at the channel. Charlie and I will both be detailing, you know, what's going on, what's planned for the channel, any future projects we have planned, and also what happened last month, any memories, milestones, whatever else for us. Us. So, because I really want you guys to get a look at what we'll be offering, the first, albeit a little bit shorter, X2 newsletter will be available to everyone publicly on patreon.com slash X2. But for future months, even a $2 pledge will get you guys access to the newsletter and some other benefits. So consider checking that out. The link will be down in the description and up in the upper right hand corner. Hey guys, hello and welcome to another video over here on X2. Now, today's content will be of the rambling variety. Now, if you're subscribed to the other channel that I run at Cart's Ladder, you probably know what that means, but if you're not already, in rambling videos, I usually pick a central thesis that I'm passionate about and I talk about it for as long as I've got something to say. Usually I'll do these videos when there's something that I think really warrants discussion, but doesn't really benefit from a highly edited or scripted type of video. And these are actually among the most highly viewed and well-liked videos on the main channel, so consider giving this one a chance if the topic interests you. So, the Star Wars universe has lots of amazing video games set within them, and many of them actually come from Star Wars Legends. In fact, I would say that the vast majority of them do. And it's hard to ignore the fact that many of these games are good not only because they've got really solid gameplay mechanics, but because they introduce compelling characters, they've got really interesting stories, and as we'll discuss today, many of them connect to the wider universe as a whole in a really interesting way. So this discussion topic was spurred by my recent playthrough of Jedi Academy, which the final game in the Jedi series, and I'm not gonna give it a number because that just opens up a can of worms that I don't wanna get into today. Is it Dark Forces 4, Jedi Knight 3, who knows? But anyway, I've sort of felt like Star Wars since the Disney buyout has been focused on cohesiveness to a really unhealthy degree. And despite that fact, I find that new Star Wars canon has failed to interconnect itself in a meaningful way. So here's what I mean. In Star Wars Legends, there was the idea that there were differing levels of canon. Basically, anything that happened in a movie overwrote anything that happened in a TV show, in a book, in a video game, and there was sort, sort of a hierarchy of canon. Now, the new Star Wars canon has claimed that that's not the case anymore, although, let's be honest, it clearly is. Episode 9 overwrote details of Poe Dameron's past. The new season of The Clone Wars contradicted other earlier material, and although things have been, I guess, decently cohesive, I wouldn't say that there's been a major improvement when you consider the fact that Star Wars Legends really was super prominent for like 30 years. A lot of the contradictions in Legends come from the fact that many of the books were written before the prequels even existed. I don't want to get too off topic today, but my point is that given the fact that all of the story has been basically laid out and that stories have directly went out of their way to not contradict episodes 7 through 9, which is why we didn't see a whole lot of Coruscant, for example, in the EU, it was planned to appear in episode 9, I don't think you can say that the whole universe is more cohesive as a whole. And that's not necessarily a knock against the new EU in and of itself. I think we might start to see a bit more variety now that the sequel trilogy is over and we've got the High Republic and other things starting up. However, I would say that this sort of adherence to canon has expanded too far into areas like video games. So this was a topic that we recently discussed on the Star Wars Battlefront podcast, and it's sort of a point that I've had for a long time. When it comes to the Star Wars universe, and really most universes in my opinion, video games should focus on fun above all else. I think that, you know, fitting in the overall universe is important, but when it comes to making a story for a Star Wars video game, I think you should really focus on making a story that is compelling and that works for the video game, rather than focusing yourself within the sort of rigid parameters of Star Wars canon. When it comes to details, yeah, make every effort to comply with what existed in the universe. I mean, that's the least you can do, and it doesn't detract from the overall vision, but video games should be fun. Star Wars video games 
games should tell a cool story above all else. So let's look at some examples of what I mean. When I'm talking about canon going too far and restricting gameplay or plot, a really good example of that is Star Wars Battlefront. And I mean, we've heard that one of the reasons why you couldn't pilot fighters has to do with Lucasfilm just not wanting bad guys to fly good guy ships and vice versa for, you know, canon reasons and just overall vision for the universe and the brand and for whatever else. And practically that just really ends up hurting the gameplay because, you know, the spawning and fighter system is much less enjoyable. In my opinion, it actually takes away from immersion and it just makes star fighters not very interesting and practically unimportant when it comes to ground combat. I also think that new canons approach approach to cohesiveness has just left some really anemic storylines like we haven't had the truly breakout characters or plot lines that we have in legends there hasn't really been a new kyle katarn because you know Nowadays, you can't really just invent new powerful Jedi because it doesn't fit the vision of the universe, despite the fact that, you know, Kyle ended up being awesome. And, you know, the average Star Wars fan who just watches the movies doesn't know about these characters anyway. And we have to look at things practically. We probably will never get a game like The Force Unleashed in the new Star Wars canon, not with a character like Starkiller anyway. And to me, Starkiller doesn't really fit very well in Star Wars Legends. You know, his placement in the timeline doesn't make very much sense. I think his level of power doesn't make sense. There's issues with cloning and whatever else. But personally, I'm still really happy that the character exists. Canon shouldn't get in the way of what's fun and what makes a good video game. It's all made up if I don't want Starkiller to exist in how I see the universe, or if I think he's not a very cohesive character, then I'll just ignore him. Even something like Kodor, I really don't think that new Star Wars video games will be able to blaze trails from a plot perspective in a completely sort of new era. I think that the story group will probably want that established in other ways, although to be honest, I could be completely wrong in this one and I don't really want to focus on it for the discussion. But I mean, if you look at the scope of video games so far, we've had two Battlefront games set generally in the same era. We've had Jedi Fallen Order, which again, I like, but same thing. We're getting Star Wars Squadrons, which you guys know I'm incredibly excited about but still that same sort of 40 year period and that's essentially all none of these stories have taken really big risks in my opinion i don't know squadrons obviously but to me it's clear that the stories in the video games just don't have the same freedom that they used to and like i said we'll probably never see another kyle katarn or another star killer or maybe even another darth revan come from a video game first of all i don't think every video game needs to be canon and second i don't think that as many people care about canon as the Lucasfilm story group cares. Again, if the video game is going to be canon, don't directly contradict other storylines, especially if you don't have to. But I think the video games should be free to make their own wild kind of plot and gameplay, knowing that eventually details could be overwritten or ignored later. I think The Force Unleashed is a good example of a plot line that was ultimately dropped for the rest of Legends, but another good example of a game that sort of did its own thing without worrying too much about the minor details would be Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Crix Maydeen had several defections in lore and there was some confusion about when he actually left the Empire, but it was still a mission to rescue him on Corellia in Rogue Squadron because it was really memorable, we got to visit a cool planet, and it was just an interesting character and a cool way to get him involved in the story. When you talk about, say, Jedi Academy, which again I've been playing recently, the cult of Ragnos being so prominent in the post-Endor era, especially across the entire galaxy, doesn't mesh super well with other Star Wars Wars expanded universe content from that time, in my opinion. It's maybe a bit too major of an event for how much it's referenced in other material, but in my opinion, it still works really well as a video game, and I don't know too many people who are unhappy that that whole series exists, despite it being kind of its own self-contained thing working within a well-established universe. Other popular Star Wars EU games like Shadows of the Empire, or again the old Rogue Squadron games, or many other examples sort of just exist as their own stories which could have happened in this greater overall timeline, and they're made better for that reason. If they were forced to sort of stick more closely to the rest of the overall story, to stay similar in tone, 
tone to what's existed and to not step on the toes of anything that came before that will come after, then the games would have been a lot less interesting in my opinion. I also don't know whether we'll get games like Knights of the Old Republic that have branching storylines and that have good and dark endings. We might, but I'm really not sure how Lucasfilm under this new cohesive vision will feel about that sort of stuff muddying up the timeline, especially until there's a source to actually explain which one is the sort of canon approach. You know what though? For everything I've said about how the Star Wars EU had these games which blazed their own storylines and which sometimes contained small contradictions or were different in theme, many Star Wars games had a very high degree of Legends integration. I would say far more so than we've seen for canon games. A really good example of this is the Dark Forces slash Jedi Knight series. Dark Forces 2 had an expansion starring Mara Jade. And in Jedi Academy, which I haven't played for over a decade, probably since release really, I've been blown away by the Star Wars Legends references. We get characters like Corrin Horn and Streen name dropped. Star Wars Legends vehicles like the Dreadnought class heavy cruiser, famous in a lot of Legends works, are used when something like a Star Destroyer would have probably been chosen for Star Wars canon. Pretty much everything Kyle Katarn says is a reference to something that happened in another work, and we get really interesting planets like the remains of Biss, which not only first appeared in the EU, but which are shaped by Dark Empire largely. For example, Biss was destroyed in Empire's End and you visited fragments, and there's references to the Empire massing his fleet there and whatever else. On Vajun, we see the statue of Vader that was destroyed in Dark Empire, and Jaden Kor actually makes direct reference to it. And then of course we have the fact that the entire game is set in Luke's Jedi Order, which didn't exist in the movies as a creation of the Star Wars expanded universe. We get references to Marco Ragnos and Korriban, all of which was created far earlier in the EU and which, you know, the average Star Wars fan may not know, but I think, if given the chance, will really appreciate. And this is more than just Easter eggs for hardcore fans, like Han having a beard in Star Wars Battlefront 2 because of Aftermath. This is a game actually shaped around the Star Wars expanded universe. Battlefront 2 sort of does that, but is ultimately, I think, let down by trying to cater a bit too hard to the average fans who again I think will nonetheless enjoy a game if they play it even if it does have characters or concepts which they can't fully appreciate. Games like Rogue Squadron have a full level dedicated to something that appeared only in the Dark Empire comics, the destruction of Mon Calamari, or the invasion, I guess, the attempted destruction, and characters like Thrawn appear in the TIE Fighter series. And there are so many more examples, and I think that if you really consider things, when you look at video games from Star Wars Legends, you'll also see that characters and ideas created from those games ended up, you know, really being paid off in the Star Wars Expanded universe even later on. And I don't just mean having tie-in novels, but Kyle Katarn, for example, was a really important character in many of the later Star Wars Legends books, especially the Fate of the Jedi series. Knights of the Old Republic basically spawned an entire era's worth of content, and Revan would become one of, if not the most important non-movie Siths, and certainly one of the most referenced. So to summarize, when talking about Rogue Squadron, I don't care that there are discrepancies with the members of Rogue Squadron or that some of the missions don't really fit into the timeline. I'm not bothered by the fact that Kyle Katarn is probably a little too prominent for, you know, the universe that he existed in, or that the Eclipse being in Force of Corruption doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What I do care about is that we got awesome stories and even better video games. I hope the Star Wars canon loosens up the sort of canon requirements and continuity requirements of new Star Wars video games. and give creators the opportunity to tell really cool stories within the universe and to connect them meaningfully with other aspects of the Star Wars EU. But guys, that's all I have for today. Let me know what you thought about this down below. I'm really curious to read your guys' thoughts on this topic and I'll be in the comment section all day, so make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Till next time though guys, this has been Justin for X2. Be safe and may the Force be with you.